What's happening YouTube, Wadoc Studios here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Godot 4.5 release. Um, there's a lot of cool things happening, um, just like the Blender Foundation, and if you find yourself using this tool a lot, consider hitting that donate button up there. It really helps the development of this engine. Um, if you are an engineer and uh, you are actively uh, working with Godot and um, you don't really want to, you know, slap that that donate button down at least consider um contributing back to the engine um you know in some way shape or form especially if you have a skill set that could continue to push the engine forward but all of that the aside um some new features have come in four or five like stencil buffer support and this allows for things like um portals uh masking of materials for like boats with water effects etc etc so Really cool to see this finally implemented into the engine, very closely related to like stencil usage uh, in Unreal Engine. Uh, granted, this is on the, the, you know, Godot's render is a Ford Plus renderer, but um, we have screen reader support, which is kind of cool. Um, accessibility is always nice to have. We have um, preheat the oven with the shader baker. This is probably another really good one for the Uber shader pipeline. Um, uh, you'll see, I'll show you here in a minute uh, what that means. Um, uh, load times have just been crazy uh, improved over each iteration. We have performance improvements on the 2D side. So even though we have an extremely cheap 2D renderer, which is very performant across multiple platforms, um, it's nice to see that they're continually working on pushing that floor even lower with more optimal uh processing of different feature sets so this is really cool um there's a ton of editor improvements that have come um you know uh, i, I don't want to dive too deep into all of this but um all of these are quality of life improvements for the editor that make your workflow a little more quick uh and and nimble as you as you navigate this already light footprint of an engine um we have uh basically a lot of xr improvements um, and GUI improvements. Uh, those of you in the Wadoc Studios community, I know that you guys have, you know, at least a slew of you are already actively developing uh, for the Quest platform um, and for, you know, Pico, et cetera, in the XR space. So, um, you know, those of you who are like tinkering around with it that are, um, you know, navigating some of the issues on the UE5 side, um, and, and those of you ha who are overcoming them even, um, you know, this is also an option and I would say it's a, it's a pretty solid, uh, you know, platform for looking at um, Vision OS or, you know, the MetaQuest and uh, even open, uh, you know, uh, web platforms, OpenXR for the web. Um, so the cool thing about this engine is so lightweight and it's, it's, it's uh, so nimble that like any Android device, um, that has been released in the last five years, you, you can run the editor on it. So, um, you know, that means XR headsets like the MetaQuest is natively running this, this editor as well. Um, so yeah, uh, gamepad improvements. I know that a few of my PRs were accepted. They are in here now, so you're going to get better like um, Xbox and uh, PlayStation DualShock 4 and DualShock 5 support. And that includes the PRs that went in to correct Bluetooth connection, like gamepad support on mobile. Um, so my PR specifically addressed having, uh, you know, the system button and a couple of the buttons that weren't mapped correctly working natively on a Bluetooth Android device. Um, so. Uh, you'll see here that they've also uh, improved the specular and ambient lighting uh, occlusion handler for Ford Plus. So, um, you know, by the way, Godot's probably got one of the most fit uh, feature rich, um, performant, and um, just uh, overall probably uh, current yeah. GPU market focused. Uh, renderer in the Ford Plus side. So uh, that goes for things like Sign Distance Field GI, Voxel GI, tons of lighting options, and staying within the realm of, you know, 90% of the GPU, GPU market right now. Um, so that's always awesome to see. Um, so you, yeah, you'll see that, you know, these 3D improvements are 
starting to push the bar of what Godot can do on the 3D side into um, a much higher fidelity. Um, so yeah, tons of XR improvements here. Again, I know a ton of you guys from both Oculus Start and uh, Wadox community that are already in this space and having a ton of fun and, um, and, and, and hammering away at projects in this space. So on the subject matter of um, rendering improvements and specular and ambient lighting improvements, huge shout out to um, Matt Madness here. Uh, this is an MIT GitHub repository with some human shaders uh, that gives an example um, both you can get the demo to download this thing. It's about 400 and something megs. I went ahead and did that to save some time and showcase this for you guys. Um, he states it does, you know, it likely works in 404. I can attest that I didn't have any problems getting the project to load in my version of Godot. Um, I haven't quite migrated my projects to 4.5 just yet. It's, I have the engine, just I'm not using it just yet. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go take a peep of this. But yeah, huge shout out to this fella. Appreciate the love. Um, and we'll, we'll go open that up real quick. By the way, it's only about a, um, 400 and something, give or take Meg, uh, download. It gives you a little splash screen and you are instantly in this. Um, you know, this is really, really super impressive. Um, the project now, if you was to open it up, you'd be able to see the animation the rig, the morph target targets, the blend shapes that are in here. Um, but this is um, really impressive to see Godot pushing the boundaries. And keep in mind, guys, this is not deferred rendering. This is forward plus rendering. Um, so the lighting capabilities of this engine is really um, starting to push the bar for what uh, you know we've seen in modern forward plus you know t uh, grid tile grid light setups. Um, um so yeah full-blown gi is 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 fully functioning here subsurface scattering is is toggleable um it's cool to see that you can turn off subsurface scattering and the way these shaders have implemented this fake subsurface is through translucency so if you turn that off you'll see the light no longer bleeds through if you turn it back on so this is the way that you would usually in the past kind of approach this effect um in a more cheaper way without real subsurface scattering. Uh, you can adjust this roughness value here and you can see the uh, specular impact uh, on the on the skin there. Um, looks makes it look a little sweaty. Um, there's a skin color color wheel here. You can toggle between kind of the standard material and the GLSL uh, implementation of this and see what those differences are in the project itself. But I didn't want to go through too much of a technical uh, deep dive of this um, it was just kind of the showcase the results but yeah super super impressive um, I, I would say give this little engine another year or so and you're gonna start seeing um, not only visual uh, fidelity improvements but uh, things that are gonna start making this engine just come into its own and really start uh, competing with the big boys so um, that's it for now. Uh, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. If you're interested in Godot, Unreal, Unity, and you want a uh, cool place to hang out with a bunch of guys that are tackling these kind of issues on a daily basis, look in that description and consider joining the Wild Ox Studios Discord. But until next time, guys, happy developing. Have a great weekend and toodles.